Hey there guys, this is Victor with Victor Vector JKU and today we're back in the garage and I'm going to be doing a review of the Torque Master Industries torque locker that I installed in my Dana 30 last year in Project Vector. So before we get into my review of the torque locker, let's go ahead and do a quick recap of last year at Reed Aurora RV Park on October 3rd. So we're on our first trail of the day in this little Instagram meetup that I had put together. Initially we had decided that we were going to start off with an easy day and start off with Twizzler, but I decided that, you know what, let's do some challenging runs as well because there are some optional hard lines in Twizzler. So on our third one, I was having a little bit of difficulty getting up out of this uh, bit of a dip in the rocks and had to give her a little bit of beans and this ended up happening. There you go. Oh! So basically what happened was as I came up, I was still on the throttle and you can see that my right tire ended up going into the rock, kind of binding up a little bit and it just sort of, it slowed enough of the inertia of my front right tire to cause power transfer through the differential ended up shearing my spider gears. So if you guys follow me on Instagram or have seen my previous install video on the torque locker, you guys already know this is exactly what happened to me last year and what led me into buying the torque locker. So I've been running this locker now for 10 months and right about 8,000 miles. And I gotta say that I'm really pleased with the overall performance in pretty much every aspect. So this was a combination of on-road and off-road driving. The on-road driving is in dry, wet, icy snow conditions um, spread throughout the year. And then also for off-road, I got into deep snow got into a little bit of mud, dirt, loose rocks, and then large boulders, as well as dry rock and muddy rock. And I gotta say from the aspect of the locker doing its job, it definitely did it hands down. So probably the best video to kind of explain how this locker worked for me is one trail that I hit last year, I think it was late October, maybe November, out at Walker Valley. This is a challenging obstacle hill climb that's just beyond the easy connector. Just before I went on this obstacle, there was two Jeep Rubicons that were lifted, matching similar builds to what mine was, but they obviously had their lockers front and rear. And they both struggled, and they needed to be winched probably two to three times a piece just to get them up through the entire obstacle. Now me, I came through it, I did have to carry a bit more inertia because obviously I don't have the gearing that they do, and also I'm only locked in the front. And I knew that I had to get a little bit more on it but I was able to basically come through and there was only this one spot right here where I got hung up and needed to back up a little bit. And then you can see how here, my rear tires aren't spinning at the same rate and the power is transferring back and forth between the left and rear tire. But my front is consistently spinning and carrying me through the obstacle, which ultimately got me through. So without that torque locker up front, there's no way I would have made it up this hill without winching or without some sort of assistance, or at least to my best guess. For me to have gotten through it with sport, with a torque locker up front and a semi-functional limited slip in the rear, I was pretty happy with making it up that obstacle. Now, a couple of comparisons here just to show. Also, I have a video of me up at Funny Rocks and here you can see I'm taking on the second line from the far right and my front axle is working just fine, both tires are spinning, but you can see my rear here. Again, it's switching power between the left and the right tire. The limited slip is trying to determine you know, where to transfer the power, whereas having a full locker would probably be a lot of help there. So as much as the torque locker is trying to get me through this obstacle, that rear end is just holding me back. And then also, some deep snow here for you. Um, me and my buddy Tyler were up in the Kawichi area out by, beyond Yakima and we were kind of busting through. I would recently just pulled him out and I decided to drill him trying to take on the same line and you can see didn't make it very far. And here again you can see as I go into reverse, my front tires are spinning but my left rear is not. Again that rear limited slip just isn't getting the job done for me and unfortunately I had to pull myself back too. So those are some videos that kind of give a little bit of uh, evidence, you know, torque locker working as it should and, you know, where my deficiencies were with the rear end. So obviously now, if you guys have been following my channel for the last few weeks, you've seen that I've upgraded my axles to the Pro Rock 44 up front 
with the matching sport locked and geared rear axle. But enough about that because that's not what we're covering in this video. We're covering the Torque Master Industries torque locker. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the torque locker, pros, cons. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dive into it, tear this apart, take a look at the components and see how they actually look after this 10 month period and 8,000 miles. First thing I want to cover is being a lunchbox uh, locker. You don't have the selectability. So once you shift into four wheel drive and you're putting power to that front axle, you're locked. You don't have any way to disengage other than shifting out of four wheel drive. So that's four high or four low. So obviously you're going to be impeding your turning radius because when you have your tires locked, when you take a tight turn, the inside tire needs to rotate at a slower speed than the outside tire. And that's just because you have less distance to travel on that inside tire than you do on the outside tire. So when you're forcing both tires to turn at an equal rate, and it'll kind of create a push on that inside tire, forcing you out of your turn. Now there's nothing negative about this because that's the way all lockers work and it's something that you have to understand. But being that you don't have a selectable locker with a torque locker, you don't really have that option. So you either got to shift in and out of four wheel drive to be able to make those tight turns, or you have to deal with an increased turning radius, which means you're not able to turn as tight. But with the torque locker is with those gear teeth, it still allows for you to achieve a tighter turn than a true full engaged locker. Because basically what happens is those teeth are able to ratchet. So it enables you to make a little bit tighter of a turn. And then as far as forward momentum and traction, I never noticed any times that my front right or left would necessarily be spinning at a different rate. They basically were always spinning at the same rate. So power transfer coming from the drive shaft down to the differential out to the tires was always constant. And as you saw in those videos, it definitely was always driving power. And then when we're talking about street performance too, because that's definitely an important thing. So you're in two wheel drive because the only time that the torque locker is actually engaged when you're driving power from the drivetrain down into the axle and applying it out to the wheels. So when you're not driving power to the front axle, when you're in two wheel drive, the torque locker isn't engaged. And so that allows it to be able to ratchet more easily. So there are a couple things that you might notice when you're driving. And I mentioned this back in my install video is that there's a little bit of a clicking or a ticking noise when you're making turns and you might notice this, you may not. I personally, probably about after the first couple to a few hundred miles, didn't really notice it anymore. And it was probably a case of either the, the teeth wore into each other a little bit or it could have been the gear oil selection. Or maybe I just got numb to the noise and I just didn't hear it anymore, I'm not really sure. But I honestly never noticed it anymore. And occasionally you might get a bit more of a popping sound. And I noticed this when I would be on like parking lots, driving low speed, really, really tight turns. When I have my steering wheel fully locked out in one direction or the other. And it would periodically do, you know, just a single pop. And basically that's just a torque locker. You know? It just makes that noise. There's nothing negative about this. How it is designed to work, uh, just the sound that it makes. So nothing to be afraid of there. But yeah, so all in all, from my perspective of owning this for the last year, installed 10 months and driving it for those 8,000 miles, I definitely enjoyed having the torque lock. There's nothing there that I would say to deter someone away from it. It's a great budget option for the position I was in, not having the money or the decision known yet with the direction that I wanted to go. I definitely recommend the torque locker by Torque Master Industries. And again, I'm going to repeat this as my install video. It's made in the USA and the owner is great to work with. If you have any issues, definitely reach out to her and she will make sure you're taken care of. But with that, let's go ahead and tear into this axle and see how that torque locker looks. All right, so let's just do a quick look at how it looks right now in the carrier, still assembled. So as you can see, everything actually looks really clean and in really good shape. And I'll go ahead and rotate the ax a little bit here. So you can see just the normal play that is built into the locker. But as we rotate it through, everything is in really good shape. Even looks like it could go back in the box and be called brand new. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the axle shafts, pull the carrier, and we'll actually disassemble it. Look at each of the pieces and do a little bit more inspection of each. So we got all disassembled. Let's go ahead and start pulling this out and see how it looks. All right, so we're first gonna look off at the side away from the ring gear and we'll look at these guys. So as you can see, they are still looking as good as they did when they came out of the box. Um, honestly, Looking at this right now, I am not seeing any kind of wear on the cam gear or the axle gear. And I gotta say that these things just, they are in really good shape. But I am very happy to see how well these still are holding up after 8,000 miles and that 10 months of travel. And the axle gears are also in good shape. And yeah, so I mean, honestly, all in all, really satisfied with how that all looks and let's go ahead and look at the ring gear side and you can see again just like the other side looks like it's in pretty much brand new shape um, there's no break in there's no chips in any of the teeth everything just looks like it's in really great shape so guys, with that being said, and seeing what kind of great condition this is in, I gotta say, Torque Locker, hands down, quality USA product, and something that I would highly recommend to anyone that's looking to stick with more of a budget style locker, or something that you can do at home, and you don't have to worry about getting your gearing professionally done to make sure that you have correct backlash and everything else, which with a typical locker requires a carrier swap out. Whereas this one here, you just replace the internals of the carrier, which means you don't have to worry about changing any shims. You just have to keep in order what you take out, make sure it goes back in the same place, mark and be precise about all that. And I covered all that back in my installation video of the torque locker, which is gonna be in the video description below. So if you guys are interested in it, I highly suggest looking into this company. Really great products. Big shout out to Torque Master Industries for a very quality product because I've heard a lot about other lunchbox style lockers, other manufacturers, that those things, they can grenade on you. And honestly, I've heard a lot of goods and bads, but I got to say my personal opinion, Torque Master Industries, Torque Locker, it's a go. I definitely recommend it and suggest to anyone that's looking to stick in that budget region and do their own work themselves. So hope that you guys enjoyed today's review video. And if you did, definitely hit the thumbs up button, give this video a like for me. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, go ahead and throw those down in the comments down below. And help me grow my channel by sharing this video. But otherwise, guys, that's going to wrap up for today. We are Victor Vector JKU. We are taking on this build and the trail with both direction and magnitude. All right, guys, have a good one. Catch you next time.